Hello everyone, and welcome to Total War Attila. My name is Mikey B, and today we're going to start a grand campaign. And I just wanted to give you a bit of background if you're new here, because usually the first episode of one of these series get gets more views than the rest. Just wanted to give you a bit, ba bit of background about my channel. It's a strategy gaming channel if you're new here, and I focus on PC games mainly. Um, obviously because there isn't really many strategy games on consoles or anything and other PC games and Total War Attila is one of the games I've been looking forward to so I felt like I'm going to do some let's plays for it I'm a huge fan of the Total War series so yeah let's get on with it I think this campaign is going to be the Danes uh, so let's go to ground campaign and just quick disclaimer uh, I haven't touched any of the campaigns in this, even the prologue, I've not done them. So you'll have to forgive me if I'm rusty. Um, I will do the prologue in my own time uh, after I finish recording this to just, you know, tighten up on everything because I purposely sort of kept myself in the dark on information because when I was covering all the information for Rome 2, I sort of got this, um, like I knew too much about the game so it wasn't as exciting at launch, if you understand what I mean. Like I knew it, like a, I can't really explain it other than that. So I sort of kept myself in the dark on this so that I can find out new stuff and be a bit more sort of, uh, I don't know, what's excited or, yeah, I guess that's right. Anyway, right, so they've got a visual representation of our leader here, the great uh, Franks. Right, so we, I was feeling like playing as the Norsemen. So the Danes, the Jutes, and the uh, Getty. I think that's how you pronounce them, Gettys. Um, not the Gettys, it was the Jutes, the Danes, and the Angles that uh, decided to invade Britain. So, I believe, if I remember my history map, um, I believe the Danes uh, pretty much controlled from the borders in Scotland all the way down to Mercia and round the coast to the bottom of... Uh, uh, Kent and London, that area, and I believe actually now I'm thinking about the Ke the Kent was owned by the Dukes, was occupied by the Dukes, and the Danes, these dudes, uh, pretty much yeah, they held the most territory if I remember my history lessons off the top of my head. Anyway, we'll double check check that after, and if you know any cool history about these guys, leave it in the comments because I love reading history. If you didn't know, I've got like a huge collection of history books covering anything so i freaking love history um yeah okay campaign settings let's have a look advice help uh advisor help let's i know this is i normally turn this off in every one of my campaigns but i think i'm gonna switch this to i think i'll leave it there it might get annoying but um i've obviously not played this uh okay we'll put a time limit on for 60 we can change all these settings in the campaign itself later on. And I love the music in the background. Holy shit. Right, the Danes. Let's have a look. Faction leader, Denar. Relig religion. Germanic paganism. Cool. Okay. So the Danny achieved that rarest of marriages. The barbarian figure coupled with civilized sophistication as the most southerly of the Norse kingdoms. They came into contact with the southern European peoples earlier than their peers, treating the strangers with an uncharacteristic openness. This led to the creation of the first runic alphabet, which has greatly enhanced the Nordic peoples. Cult oh yeah, which greatly enhanced the Nordic uh, culture and peoples and culture and trade. However, this has not dampened the Danny's... Yeah, the Danny... How do you pronounce that? Is that Danny or Danny? Dany, because it's Danish, so if that was a... Yeah, so it's Dany's desire for conquest. I could be wrong on that. Um, but anyway. Many northern tribes plunder foreign shores, yet neglect their own. Not the Dany, poised to take advantage of the ensuing upheaval. They strive to forge a Grand Nordic Empire to outlast Rome's. Which they technically did. Because Britain then... The Saxons also joined in the mix um, yeah you've got all these different cultures that sort of migrated to Britain including the native Celtic people which became Wales and if you are new here I'm Welsh even though for some reason I have a northern English I've been told I sound like I come from Chester 
that Northern English sort of area. Even though I've lived in Wales my whole life, which is weird. But anyway, the Celts, the Anglo-Saxons, and all these different cultures came together and made Britain an extremely... I don't know, I, I guess it was the... So, all these different cultures working together ended up becoming quite a powerful country down the road, I guess, historically. But then again, you think about leaving the Dark Ages and the medieval times, you've got the Normans who invaded and... All sorts of crap going on like that, so... I wonder if the, if you traced it back, would that literally have some connection to as to how... Britain became so powerful with an empire? Like, the mixture of... I don't know. Oh god, that's some interesting history to read. Like, other, did they take characteristics? Like, how did we get to our culture now? Oh god, all these interesting questions. It says the initial difficulty is hard. I'm going to switch, leave it on normal for now. We'll probably change that later down the road because I like usually playing on very hard. Um, but uh, I literally haven't touched the campaign in this game. So let's go forward. I've got an AMD graphics card. So anything you see on the screen and see the glitches and all that shit. Including, oh yeah, you'll notice the background isn't moving. That is because I tapped out to test my microphone before I started recording. So sorry about that. Anyway, I hope I didn't bore you to death with all my talking, but anyway, let's start the campaign. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. What's this? Construction icon. Indicates building options if available. Capital icon. Indicates your faction's capital intelligence icon, which is number three. Yeah, that's intelligent sanitation. Indicates the settlement's level of sanitation, number four. Okay, so that's bad sanitation, I think that means. Uh, five, trade resources. Shows the re settlement's resources. Yep. Yeah. And six, garrison icon will show the settlement's garrison. Okay. So they've overhauled the UI. Totally. Wow. That looks really sort of awesome. I love that sort of... Um, I don't know, they can... That's one thing I always like about Total War games, and even Paradox games, to be honest, the, the UIs are always really satisfying, like buttons to click <laughs> and shit. They actually make a satisfying little noise. Anyway. Ooh, cutscene. East, that's Western Rome. The air Roman was filled with smoke and blood. Rome was weak. The tribes grew in strength and number. Their roots went deep, and they felt the earth's blood pounding through the land. But their borders were threatened, for a great storm raged in the east. Ah, uh, yeah. One by one, the tribes scattered as seeds in the wind. And behold, a red horse, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. The blood of their kin would be avenged. Whoa. Holy shit. That's so cool. Ooh. He fell over. Sorry. Great hunters. They tempered now their blades screwed. in Roman blood. And saw their once mighty walls reduced to dust. Oh. They made ready for war. That must be shit scary, though, to be a Roman in that situation. The world is changing. A lasting cold creeps from the Ooh. north. And nice you graphics. must seek opportunities south of your homelands if you are to survive and prosper. Take to the seas and explore nearby shores, for the local tribes will be no match for Angli the warriors. At the Angles. The plunder they bring home will line the coffers for the trials ahead. The exploration and conquest of distant lands 
of corrupt empires grown weak through years <clears throat> of infighting and of petty tribes without the strength or will to fight. By sea or by land, the south is yours for the taking. Ooh. Triumph, and they will sing songs of your deeds until the end of days. Wow. I This game already feels super polished compared to Rome 2's launch. Wow. Okay, look at this UI. They've totally changed it up a bit. So the money's up here. Current treasury. Predicted income. Food surplus. The year. Uh, what's this now? These are our benefits, are they? Part of the... Uh... Yeah, shit. I didn't check the benef the, uh, the the traits of the tribe, did I? So these must be the traits. Viking raiders. 75% income from sacking, looting and raiding. Seaborn, immune to seasickness, immune to high seas attrition. Wow. That is super good. I think I know what, how I'm going to play this campaign then. Because I played a naval battle before. Um, let's have a look. What's this now? S uh, survive until the following date. So just survive. Okay, we must have something bad coming. So it's four turns per year. And then, okay, so that's... That is math too hard. Right. 20 turns, is it? I don't know. Right, so this is the advisor, Total War Encyclopedia, the chat, and the menu. Okay, that's usual where it is. Um, right. Right. Okay. So, when I played a naval battle before, like I was saying, um, the naval system felt more responsive. So I think what I might do is I've never played, like I didn't play Rome 2 like this. What if I focus entirely on Navy? Like what if I put all my resources towards building a super strong Navy and migrate to Britain? Do you know what I mean? Like if we follow this round. So what's this? This will be, that would be Sweden. And then we go around here and crash into Britain. Oh wait, no, this... Oh yeah, see the little map, duh. So here's Sweden, here's Norway. So we pass Sweden and Norway. Float all the way down here and invade. Do we invade in the north though? <gasps> Choices. Right, so we're going to set that up. Um, I'm going to... Wait a minute. Are we at war with these guys? You have selected a character belonging to another faction that you cannot control. Yeah, I know. Please select one of your own to yeah. learn more about their abilities. Obviously, I was just wondering if the red ring... What the red rings mean. I think that might be an enemy. Oh yeah, it is. Let's have a look. Does it say at war? Or do I have to write? Red settlements mean at war. These guys are neutral, so they're grey, obviously. And then... Yeah, so let's have a look at our forces. Nordic levies. So these guys are literally just glorified peasants. Um, if it's following historically speaking. Um, Alright, so how do I see... Toggle unit stats. There we are. I want to see that all the time. Yeah, so these guys haven't got very good stats at all. Why have these guys got better stats than the ones next to them because they're exactly the same Nordic levies look but for some reason the one on the right has got lower stats no it hasn't wait yes it has kind of this is just a UI bug unless these guys are just more experienced I guess um, and then we've got the general and then we've got what have we got here Nordic band very poor armor piercing damage, very poor armor, low health. So these guys are pretty damn awful, actually. I think they might be shit compared to... Yeah, they're even crap compared to the standard levies. So these guys are just basically given... You know, peasants given swords and stuff. And then we've got Nordic bows, very poor missile blocked at chance. Very poor armor, very poor armor piercing damage. So these guys are pretty crap as well. Yeah, so it turns out the Nordic levels, levies that I called it's just glorified peasants, they're actually better than them. Right, so we're doing... 
Right, let's check this the tab enables you wow, to research this looks the technology different. that will give you an advantage over your rivals. To begin, simply select the item you wish to research. Yeah, there are no it's common sense. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is just the cut the uh, technology tree laid out fully instead of how it was in room two, where you just pick the next one. Um, actually, no, I speak out of ignorance. They had a whole tree like this, didn't they, laid out, but with each individual thing on different tabs. Yeah, I remember now. Your treasury. Research rate, 100%. Well-defended coastline keeps the wolves from the door. Recruitment cost, minus two. Enables the building of a hunter's camp. And this one is community property. No longer can the bad workman blame his tools. Okay. A wicker maker... Goat pens, we can make even more goat pens. Okay, I'm going to enable this research because it unlocks the most stuff that could be beneficial. Um, right, let's leave that where it is and then let's have a look at diplomacy. In order to construct a proposal, double click on a faction from the list and then add diplomatic options by clicking on the add offer or demand yeah, buttons. Yeah, yeah, same, same stuff. Right, um... There's filters. I did, did remember reading about this, though. Uh, new filters have been added. So let's have a look. Who are we at war with? Is there a war faction? A war option, I mean. Sanitation, immigrants, food, fertility. Okay. Religion. We are all the same religion. Region growth. Our one is uh, pretty bad by the looks of that. Because it's grey. And green, I think, means growth is happening. So we're not trading with the Angles. We can't trade with the Burgundian, Burgun, yeah, Burgundians. Um, the gate. Or I need to Google how to pronounce that. How have I forgotten how you pronounce it? I was reading a book about them. Oh well, it's, it's different when you're reading it instead of saying it out loud. Um, so we are at war with the Van Varinians, and we are at war with the Rugians. Great. They're aggressive, temperamental, o overly aware of their surroundings. Temperamental, because there's an extra A in there. Okay, surrounding. Okay, overly aware of their surroundings. Events. I'm sorry. I know that somebody is going to be getting extremely like frustrated, or they've already abandoned the video by now. I guess. <laughs> Because I'm a bit of a scrub, because I literally... This is the first campaign I'm doing, so I'm sort of learning as I go. Which I guess is a good thing for some people, because they will get to see the game as well, fully. Learn the game with me, if they've not bought it. Um, and uh, having a look, so... We're steadfast, which means we are... Uh, we're good, I think that means. Imperium insignificant. Oh my god, we're weak. Strength ranking. Let's have a look. This is your faction's strength ranking. Rated against all existing factions. Okay. Right, so what I'm going to do is immediately secure trade with whoever I can. Um, we are at the bottom of the barrel here looking at it. Because look at the strength rank between the both of them. We're apparently stronger than the Varinians. And we're also slightly stronger than the Rugians. The problem is... We are... Uh you know, fighting two at a time, and God knows if they have an alliance. Let's have a look. Are they allied with anyone trading? They don't have any allies on their side. They're just enemies. We've got the Danes and the Burgundians are on our side. They're in the middle. Oh, I see. So there's an opportunity for an alliance there. We could make an alliance with the Burgundians. Burgundians. How? Yeah, because it's Burgundy. So the Burgundians. Yeah. Okay. Okie dokes. Let's have a look. Let's secure the trade with these guys. A flapping tongue that speaks without wisdom is not welcome. Be like a spear and have a point. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> this option is used to broker trade agreements. Yes. Yeah, Once know. agreed, a trade route is a... Yeah, projected income. They rejected. How come? Let's just try this one. Greetings. Speak plainly and without idle purpose. 
Right, trade agreement. They want me to pay 600. A little gold. You have much, and our people do not wish to become the slaves of envy. Don't push me. I will invade the shit out of you. Uh, I will offer you 200 for a trade route. Oh, wait, the minimum is 300. Is that their lowest bargaining? Okay, likelihood of success. Because that would take four turns to make a profit back on the trade route, that means. We can agree here, if the spirits wish it, to profit okay. treaties between our people. They are offering to pay for a non-aggression pact. Okay, let's go for a non-aggression pact and a trade agreement then. Following yes. a new agreement, a trade route has been opened between you and your new trading partner. Guard it well, as your enemies will attempt to raid it, potentially ruining your economy. Yeah, okay. Alright, I'm going to split the part here, so thank you very much for joining me on this very introductory episode of the Danes Let's Play for Total War Attila. And if you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to hit the subscribe button or the like button. They help out a ton. And if you do fancy sticking along, feel free to check out my other videos, because I make quite a lot of videos. So, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.